So once again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, dare I say good evening from wherever you're attending from around the world. Uh, my name is Ian Foster. I'm a senior ERP consultant with Mint UK. Um, I haven't always been uh, an ERP consultant. I actually started life on the client side, so I spent 26 years at Rolls-Royce Aerospace Group of Companies, eight years at Jaguar Land Rover, um, and then in 2018, um, went to the dark side of consulting, uh, where fortunately um, the company I worked for at the time, Ebex, were looking to bring in people with um, industry experience rather than Microsoft technology stack experience. Um, the thinking behind that was that you can teach people technology. What you can't give them is 30 or 40 years of uh, industry knowledge and experience. Um, so that's how I came to being, as it were. So today's session, Webinar Wednesday. <clears throat> It's all about engineering change management through the looking glass um, and specifically in Dynamics 365 um, supply chain management. What I just want to say before we get into it is um, this is really a, for anybody interested dipping your toes into the world of engineering change management rather than engineering change management in, in all its glory. So I'll give you a flavour of the capabilities of the engineering change management module. And it does frustrate me somewhat that this is hidden away. It's not switched on by default. There's a, a couple of configuration keys that need switching on. Feature management needs switching on. Um, so, yeah, there's engineering change management. And to complement that, there's the product versioning. Uh, <clears throat> configuration key as well to enable the uh, a new product dimension called version. Um, so that's what we're about today. Um, what I would say is we've got a Q&A at the end. So um, if there are any questions you have um, it, in order to get through the presentation deck and the demonstration, um, if we could possibly reserve those for the end, that would be uh, uh, most appreciated. <clears throat> So what's on the agenda? What is engineering change management and what does it mean to us all? Why is it important? Key features of, it, of D365 engineering change management. We're then going to go into a demonstration um, of how, how it works uh, and then look at some best practices for implementing engineering change management. With a conclusion, and then, as I said at the end, uh, a Q and A uh, opportunity. So, <clears throat> what is it? So, definition of engineering change management: it's a structured process for managing changes to product designs, bill of materials, and in that you can include formulas now, and associated engineering documentation. The goal of engineering change, man change management is to ensure that changes are properly reviewed, approved and implemented whilst minimising disruptions to the business. Common scenarios um, are concerned with design revisions, component substitutions, cost reductions and probably the most important quality improvements in the design product. So why is it important? Well, in my mind, it's important because of quality control. So it ensures product quality and safety, compliance. So in highly regulated industries, we have regulatory requirements and standards. Cost management, we can control the expenses in the design and release of a new product. It improves efficiency by reducing the rework and delays. So if we've got a properly structured engineering change management process, um, we should get to a point where we're designing products more right first time. 
And finally, co collaboration. So this facilitates cross-functional collaboration and also cross-company collaboration, where you've got more of a global footprint uh, and several entities within D365. <clears throat> so my five chart topping key features. Um, so it facilitates change request management. Um, it enables us to create, review and approve change requests and change orders. Bill of material and formula versioning. So we can have uh, multiple BOM and formula versions. Um, we can manage several versions at the same time. Um, and that's facilitated by having the new um, dimension of version. Document control. So within the process, the end-to-end -end process, we can capture and control a number of engineering documents, whether that be design drawings, engineering specifications, material specifications. They're all captured in one place. <clears throat> Workflow automation. So within engineering change management, like a lot of other modules within D365, it has full workflow capability specific to engineering change management. And we'll just touch on that a bit later. So again, um, effectively with a templated process, uh, we can have consistent and well-structured uh, workflows for the end-to-end -end approvals. Finally, the audit trail capability. So we can track all change, change related activities as that um, new product or, or design change go through, through its product life cycle. We can always go back and see who did what and when and, and why. Um, and again, in, in highly regulated industries, particularly in process manufacturing, um, that is absolutely key. So in terms of the demo, <clears throat> um, I just wanted to sort, sort of set the scene and a bit of a storyboard here as to um, how it's going to play out. So the scenario is we've got two separate companies and I'm going to be using Contoso data and using DEMF as our engineering uh, organization where design changes are um, brought to life and, and managed. And then USMF, where in this scenario, it's our sales manufacturing and distribution company. We're going to create a new engineered product in DEMF, release it to USMF and accept the engineering product. And that will become more apparent um, during the demonstration, the concept of accepting the change. We're then going to sell the new uh, engineered product to a US002 company in USMF. We're going to then request some customer changes to the product based on their knowledge and experience of the product. We're then going to make those changes to the product via an engineering change order in DEMF. And then finally release the changed product um, with a new version back to USMF. So that's the sort of high level um, scenario we're going to walk through. <clears throat> so I'm just going to switch my screens now. Um, to DEMF. Uh, so stop sharing. And share. There we go. <clears throat> OK, so I'm just going to suck a little bit, make it a bit bigger for you. So this is the EMF company. Again, if you recall, this is our um, engineering design authority or research and development facility. And I'm just going to quickly talk through some configurations that have to happen, um, because like any any module within D365, depending on how complex your business is and how complex you want the functionality to be delivered, depends on 
you know, how much configuration you have to do. Um, for today's purposes, I've sort of kept it fairly high level. Um, but if we do look um, in the engineering change management module within D365 under the setup, uh, we've got a few things here that need to be um, configured before we can do something uh, useful with the uh, with the functionality. So very quickly on the engineering change parameters, um, there's only two tabs, one concerning release control and one concerning engineering change management. So these are about the receiving and sending rules and how we accept the product. Um, so we're going to use the engineering product number and the engineering name of the bomb and the route. Um, the release behavior, you know, if you've got an inactive bomb, how do you want this to be sent? Do you want to just accept it? Uh, do you want to warn the user or do you want to completely disallow it if, if the product has uh, got an inactive bomb? Um, um, this is probably the more crucial one here, the product acceptance. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when we release this to USMF, it has to be accepted. Now, by saying manual, it means I have to formally accept it. I could use automatic, whereby any new product release versions that are released to the other legal entities are automatically accepted um, without giving that function or that legal entity an option to challenge or discuss the, the change that's going to impact their business. Uh, so that's set to manual and you'll see how that plays out um, in the demonstration. In terms of engineering change management tab, um, we've got uh, an engineering product category section here. Uh, we've got a priority, severity rules and uh, pre-release impacted products and bomb levels to release. And again, you'll see how that plays out in the, in the demo. <clears throat> So engineering workflow. So as I said earlier, the engineering change management modules comes with its own workflow capability specific to engineering change management. Um, so here's some examples uh, of workflows I've set up already. So engineering change order review for an emergency change order versus a non-emergency change order. Now, from a workflow perspective, I've turned it off for today's demo because um, anybody who, who has worked with, with workflows where they're switched on, whether it be in the procurement um, module or any other module, it can often take a long time to, for that workflow to run through its approval processes. And then it's generally reliant on a user to do something to accept or reject um, a suggestion. So I've just switched it off for today, but I'm just demonstrating here that um, there is the capability to, to develop uh, an exhaustive list, list, list of workflows, what, you know, uh, as you would in procurement sourcing or, or accounts payable, uh, for example. Um, <clears throat> one of the key things that does need setting up is uh, an engineering organization. So we need to tell the system which, um, which of our businesses or legal entities is an engineering organization. So in this case, I've created just here, DEMF um, is our Contoso Entertainment System for Germany, and it's our designated engineering organization. Um, engineering product category details. So again, for today's demo, I've set this one up called components, um, which gives us some nominal information around the product dimensions group. So versions is the one, is the new product dimension I've set up uh, and is active. I've got a default product life cycle state at creation of the product. I've got product version number. So if I just click on that. Um, so when it comes to product versioning number rules, um, you can have all auto list manual, uh, I've got it set to auto uh, with a predefined format, so V dash, and it will be 0, 1, 0, 2, et cetera. I could also have a list of versions, or I can have it set to manual, and I just 
um, input my own version number. Um, <clears throat> attributes is something I'm not going to touch on today, but it does allow you to uh, set up a whole host of uh, product related attributes. Uh, probably going to do that a deeper dive in a, in a different webinar uh, once we've all got a better understanding of uh, the basic concepts of engineering change management. I could also have a product readiness policy and let me just show you what that means. Um, if I click on some details. Uh, <sighs> So if I look at this one, for example, components. So what this allows you to do is before the product is released, it, you can have a whole host of checks that are are um, validated. So uh, whether it's got a barcode, check if a bomb exists, et cetera, et cetera. Has it got a cost price? Uh, are all the default order settings set up? So there's a whole um, raft of checks you can do there. Uh, that need to be validated before um, you could formally release the product. Uh, we're not going to be using that today, uh, but what we are using is this product release policy here. Um, and what this does is there's some, again, some information here about the production type. Um, uh, and what's important here is apply template. So when I create a new product, same as, as pre-engineering change management, I can create product templates in D365 and use them. And all this is saying is that for, for these two companies, DEMF and USMF, I'm going to use the template for the item D0006. But what's more important on this line here uh, for USMF is I want it to receive the bomb. I want to copy the bomb approvals. I want to uh, copy the bomb activation uh, and the same for the route. So when I create <clears throat> a product in DEMF and release it to USMF, it's automatically going to copy over all of that associated information here to USMF. Um, and then I can set some optional parameters. So am I using a templated bomb and templated route, for example? Uh, I haven't in this scenario, but I could do. OK. So that's the engineering product category details that I've set up. Um, so without further ado, let's go and create a new release product. So I'm just going to go to my. Um, release products page. And what you'll notice now is <clears throat> under the product uh, menu item, we've now under new, we've now got this engineering product because we've configured the, the we've set up the configuration key for engineering change management, we've enabled it, et cetera, et cetera. And now it gives us this new engineering product. So if I click on that, um, and it asks me for the engineering product category, I've set one up for components. So if you remember the engineering product category, it is templated. I've also got a product owner. So if I want to go to that um, next level of granularity and assign product owners, I can. And again, I've created one for components, and in that product, components product owner group, I've added a, a couple of employees. So let's create um, a product number here. Let's call it just web-001. You can see straight away the version defaults to version one because this is the new product and version one being the nomenclature that we're using. Um, I could give it a, a name. Um, I end speaker set. Give yeah, a description if I wanted to, but I'm not too fussed about that. So 
you see now we've created this um, Web 001 high-end speaker set, and you can see straight away some of those fields that are automatically filled in around storage dimensions, uh, etc., um, uh, and the item model group. Because, as I mentioned earlier, this has been templated from an existing product uh, D006. Um, I'm not going to go through. Um, all of the tabs because they're just standard D365 product tabs. Uh, and if we look on the engineer tab now, and again, we've got this engineering versions. And this tells me now we've got version one. The organization is DEMF and it's active. So if I click on the version, it will give me the relevant details. So in the general tab, it's active. I could set some effectivity dates for this version if I wanted to. I don't have to. Um, it's defaulted to a product life lifecycle state of operational. Here's my product number, the engineering organization, and the product category details. Here I could add some engineering attributes um, if I so desire. I could I could add some notes or some documentation, um, and ultimately a bill of material, which is what I need to do next. So I'm going to create the bomb for this. Um, just call it web and finish. Double uh, O one, and we're going to call. Do this for site one. OK. So then I've got this bomb, um, which is predefined by a number uh, sequence. But then, of course, I need to add some lines to it. So again, brings up the standard bill of material um, screen. And I'm just going to I'm just going to add three products. Uh, D zero zero. Uh, Zero one D zero 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 three and D zero 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 six. I'm not going to bother changing any of the quantities or per series settings, it's just uh, for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to leave those as they are. <coughs> Um, so now I can save that and go back. So now we've got our bill of material. Um, I want to approve it. Um, and I'm going to approve it. OK. So now it's approved and now we activate it. So now we've got a bill of material with some three components to the structure. It's approved and it's active. OK, so I'm not going to bother with the root, but, you know, standard process again, we could go through that with the root. Doing a, a standard process for creating a new root in the same way I've done the bill of material. I'm not going to bother with the demonstration. But now we want to release this um, engineered product to our sales business or, and manufacturing. So if we're doing in-house manufacturing, we can manufacture the item through the production um, facility and then subsequently sell it uh, and dispatch it. So I'm going back to my um, release product screen. And we'll go and find our, our newly created product. Uh, and there it is. Um, and then under the maintain tab now, in the product maintain, we've got this new functionality called release product structure. So if I click on that, um, well, I could set the default releasing site if I wanted to at site one. 
But there's our high end speaker set we've just created with Web 001 and version one. So that's the product I want to release. And then, of course, where do we want it to release it to? And, and this is where I could release it to a whole host of, of other legal entities within my, uh, my organization. Uh, but today we're going to release it to USMF. And I'll click on next, finish. Um, so now that's a fully released product. OK, now. If I switch to um, now I'm in USMF. So if I go to my release products page in USMF, what you'll notice is the pro even though we've just released it to USMF, um, the product isn't there, it's empty. Uh, because one of the parameter settings I set was the acceptance and I said it has to be manual. So it has to be manually accepted into the receiving company. Um, and that's achieved by looking at engineering change management, open product releases. So now you'll see sitting there is Web 001 version one waiting for me to accept it. Now, at this point, of course, as the receiving organization, I may want to, to hold some sort of a engineering change control board meeting with purchasing and manufacturing, etc. Um, and discuss the impact of this, how we're going to purchase it, how we're going to make it if it's made in house, for example. <clears throat> so if I click on the product number here. Uh, again, you can see some basic information about uh, under the general tab where it's been released from, where it's been received to, and you can see here pending acceptance. Um, other release details component engineering product category product owner um, and then we've got in the bill of material we're going to receive the bomb and the approval and the activation if you recall that was another parameter setting we had and we're not bothering with the root and you can see here this um, this tree here effectively is effectively the bomb designer type tree um, that most people would be familiar with and it's interesting when I first looked at this um, you know, it doesn't come up with the right sort of tree. It's only got one product in there. Uh, and I found that I have to go, go back and click on it again, which is a bit annoying. Um, but you see now we've got under our Web01, Web001 uh, finished product, we've got these three component trees there now. OK. Um, and now, of course, I want to under actions, I can accept, validate or reject that um, newly released product. So I'm going to accept it now. Um, and then again, if I go back into my release products now. Um, and filter on my my web. You'll see now that Web 001 is in fact now fully released um, into my US MF company. So now I yeah I can get I can do some forecasting, master planning will recognise it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I can sell the product. And again, we've got you'll see here under engineering versions. We've now got version one and it's come from the DEMF is the the design authority that's released that to me and it's active. OK, so now I've got a product it's been released, so now I, I want to um, add it to a sales order. Um, so I'm going to go to my new sales orders. I'm going to create a new sales order. And we're just going to use US002 for no particular reason. OK, I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to say OK. <clears throat> uh, 
And now here I can put in my web dash double one. My newly released product. And again, I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to say save. OK. Um, and then I can do the usual confirmation. OK. Um, so let's just assume now I've sold this product to my client um, and we do a lot of work for this uh, for this customer. He's a valued customer. Um, we design stuff specifically for them um, to their exacting needs and standards. Um, and now we've had this new engineered product. Uh, it's been implemented. They purchased uh, some quantity of it. Um, but, but after some weeks or months have passed, they may, may think, right, um, we could improve this. Uh, and therefore, we've got a, a, a suggestion to make. And so there'll be some dialogue take place between um, the client and the customer service team uh, within sales. Um, and the customer, uh, you know, the, the, the client wants to suggest uh, an engineering change request which the customer service uh, advisor uh, would raise on their behalf in this scenario. <clears throat> so you'll notice here on the sales order line, so the customer service advisor brings up the uh, particular sales order relevant to this, this client. And you can see here now we've got this engineering change capability here. So if I click on that, we can now raise a new engineering change request. So uh, I'm 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 just going to put in some um, customer change request. I can set a priority for this. So having that dialogue with the client, uh, we can determine: is it an emergency change? Is it an urgent change? Or is it a routine? I'm going to keep it a routine. Um, and then, and, and of course, that's configurable. You can have as Create as many different priorities as you desire there. And then under category is saying, you know, it's configurable. Is it a new development? Is it a change or is it an issue with it with the uh, with the item? So I'm just going to click on change. Um, severity. Well, we've had that conversation and the client uh, determines it's a high severity for them. All right, so I can save that. <clears throat> and you'll notice, and this is very similar to case management functionality. Now that I've saved it, it's immediately recognized that I'm dealing with this particular product. So it's populated this products tab um, with Web001 version one. And also the source, and in this case, it's from come from a sales order line. Um, there's a sales order reference. Um, and the item Web001 and USMF. So very similar to case management, where we 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 relate items to associated um, uh, items, whether it be a sales order, a purchase order, a product, uh, and all of that's done automatically for you. Okay, so here I can just add a note, um, some any any relevant information. Um, Customer sent me some pictures of, of the issue, so I could add some um, images or I could just add a note. Um, where dash double one customer change request. And again, I, I could um, type in, uh, uh, yeah, let's put in there. Uh, so, yes, the customer has evaluated the product and is suggesting that item D0003 um, should be removed from the bomb. Okay, so 
in this scenario, a fairly simple request. Um, our valued customer has evaluated the new product and determined that, you know, what um, item D003 um, is no longer required. It's uh, surplus to requirements, or it could be that, you know, it's we, we need to do something different. We need to uh, substitute this item for another one, for example. But just demonstrating that we can we can add notes, files, images um, as much as we like um, with, with uh, associated uh, wording. So again, I can save that. Um, so that's the engineering change request. Um, we now need to create the uh, engineering change order. So if I go here, so now under engineering change management, <clears throat> we've got engineering change requests. And you'll see now we've got this new one here that we've just created. I can then, through my change control board, review all the relevant bits of information. Um, but ultimately, uh, in this case, I'm going to approve it. OK, so now I've approved that. And now I want to create the engineering change order. So don't forget, as we said previously, um, engineering change requests can, can emanate from anywhere, uh, a warehouse worker, a design engineer, a customer, a supplier, et cetera, et cetera. So anybody can create or request the engineering change request, but the engineering change order is the body, the design authority that either accepts and rejects it and implements the change as it's uh, either as it's intended by the, in this case, the customer, or through some dialogue, we've actually uh, decided to do something slightly different. But ultimately, we need to create the engineering change order. So engineering change orders. Um, I'm going to say new. Um, use title. So let's just call it web dash double one. Customer change request. And again, we've got some category here. It's a change. Priority is routine. Um, and now I need to tell the system what the impacted products are. So if I click on new, add existing product. Um, I need to change back to, uh, let's just, I'm going to cancel that a minute. Let's delete that. So I've just realized I'm still in USMF. I'm now going to go back to um, DEMF, which is the design authority. Um, so if I look here at engineering change requests, so even though this change request was created in USMF, it's now appeared in my design authority, i.e. DEMF. So here now I'm going to create the engineering change order in DEMF. Um, so I'll just click on new again. Dash double one customer CR. <clears throat> uh, it's a change. We've said it's routine. Um, severity. Let's just say it's going to be a, through dialogue with the customer. It's a high severity. Um, the impacted product. It's an existing product. Um, and it's web to blow one. Uh, version one. So there we are. And again, we've got some um, product details here. And the important thing here is under the impacted products tab is what is the impact of this? Um, and you'll see as I. So here we've got impact known. Um, and because of that, it's still Web 001 version one. But we've determined as an engineering change control board 
um, that we're going to create a new version. So when I say new version, straight away, it retains the item number, but creates this new version um, two. If I said it was a new product, for example, then of course it just blocks out the product number because I've got to create a new item number um, and defaults back to version one. So in this scenario, we're going to have a new version, Web001 version two. OK, so now I'm going to save that. This is now the engineering change order. Um, and under the product details on the bill of material. So if you remember, the client has suggested uh, we don't we don't need uh, item D0003 any longer. Um, so you can see here under the bill of materials, it's currently um, unchanged um, the bomb. So if we look at um, the lines, and you'll see by default they're all, all unchanged. But we've said we don't want this item anymore, and we've agreed it, it's no longer uh, required as part of this uh, finished product. So I'm just going to delete that um, bomb item. So D003 is now deleted. Save that. And you'll see now that the change type has changed. Um, still active and approved. So now just to recap, we've created a new product. We've released it to our sales and distribution company, USMF. The client suggested a change back in DEMF, our engineering organization. We've now um, effectively created a, a new item um, with a new bomb by deleting that one component from the bomb. Um, so now we need to re-release this um, back into USMF as an approved product. Um, so we've got approve this change. Again, we've gone through a change control board. We've discussed all the merits of the change and now we've just approved it. Um, and now I need to process this change, uh, which will update all the product information related to it. OK, so we're still in DEMF. I'm just going to go to my release products page. Um, Again, select our web-001. Um, and again, we can go to our engineer tab and look at our engineering versions. And you now see we've got version one and two, and they're both active. I could deactivate version one if I so desired at this point, or I may realize that, well, I'm only going to distribute version two to USMF, but version one, will remain active in other legal entities I've already uh, released it to. OK, so just going back to the engineering change order. Uh, this is the one we've just created. Uh, so under the change order uh, menu item at the top, product releases, I could go and search or view um, this. and search it so here we've got so this is searching for companies that are uh, this item has been previously released to so here would be a list of all the the various legal entities that we've we've previously really released this to you can see here web 001 has been released to usmf previously and that could be a whole um, raft of lists in that item uh, items in the list
Now we go to view. Now I've searched it, I can now view it. And there it is, uh, which is the, so this is the view of the previous search. And now I can process this. And you see one release have been run. So again, now um, I can now end of the process. Everything's been processed. It's been re-released. I can now complete you know, in terms of the, the change status. This, this change is now complete. And again, going back to the fact that we've now got two versions of this product uh, and I've released the latest version two to USMF. And again, if we go back to USMF, and look in the engineering versions, you can still see only one version, because if you recall, it still has to be accepted. So the final step in the dance is to go and look at the open product releases. And you see now we've got item web to blow one. Um, version two now is uh, the newly uh, received version. So again, We've had a meeting uh, around our change control board within USMF. We've looked at the merits of, uh, of accepting this change and we've decided to accept it. Um, and you see now version two is released. So finally release products in USMF. Um, look at my item numbers and for our web to blow one, to blow one, to blow one. And there it is. And again, uh, under the engineer menu, we've got engineering versions. And you can see now um, in version one and two are both active in USMF. And of course, now I could make a decision whether to deactivate version one and only sell version two now. And um, that pretty much concludes the demonstration. Um, I'm just going to switch back now to my um, presentation tab. <clears throat> so to summarise, uh, engineering change management in a nutshell. It facilitates centralized product data management. So set up an engineering organization that uh, through a managed release process, uh, you know, and that may may include things like the creation of a change control board. Um, but it will give us accurate and relevant product data available to all users across the entire enterprise. Um, key to this, of course, is the product versioning which allows us to track changes to products through the product versions and the product life cycle um, at all stages of the supply chain. So by using the product version um, dimension now, we can have multiple versions active and different versions active in different legal entities um, if that's what the business demands. So it may be that the latest version, for example, might be just for a prototype. Um, and you wouldn't want that released anywhere else. So you might have version two active in your engineering organization, but version one active in your manufacturing and sales business. Product life cycle management. Um, so let me just show you that because this is key as well. Um, I'll just stop sharing that screen again and go back to my demo screen. So just to touch on that product life cycle management. Um, so again, within uh, engineering change management, we've got product life cycle state now. Uh, and because we've switched on um, engineering change management, it now gives us these enabled business processes. Um, and I've worked with several organizations that, you know, are crying out for this um, to be able to control um, by business process, what they can and cannot do. 
So traditionally, of course, you just get this, uh, it's the default, it's active for planning. So master planning will recognize any product that has this operational life cycle state. But uh, I've created one here for prototype, for example. Um, and I've said enable with warning, um, just to make the, the user aware. But if I've got a product that's end of life, I, I, I will need it to be blocked for certain business processes. And this is what this new functionality does for me. So if it's end of life, I don't want any more forecasts being created, for example. I don't want anybody buying the, you know, purchasing the item, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I still want to sell it because I want to run the stock pack. <clears throat> so this is tremendous um, additional functionality, which is quite powerful. Um, whether or not you choose to use the entirety of the engineering change management functionality and capability or not, this in itself is, is a fantastic addition in its own right. So that's really useful. Um, back to my uh, presentation deck. So yeah, product lifecycle management, you know, the, the visibility of the product data um, against various uh, enabled business processes is a, is a tremendous uh, uh, addition to the family. <clears throat> um, so engineering change management enabled users throughout the organization to request changes. And it's not just throughout the organization, of course, as we've demonstrated. Um, they could emanate from the, the supply chain or the customer base, uh, but ultimately uh, it will be down to the uh, customer service advisor to request the change on their behalf. And then, of course, uh, based on that engineering change request, we have the engineering change order, which is the ultimate design authority um, that then, uh, with the addition of workflows, we have a very structured end-to-end um, -end engineering change uh, business process. Readiness control, so we can, as I touched on uh, at the beginning there, we have readiness controls where we can specify either through standard listings, um, you know, does that have a bomb as the default order settings being set, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Or, or I could create a questionnaire um, that lists various questions that need to be answered. Um, and then enhance release product functionality. Uh, so the release of a fully configured product version from an engineering organization to one or more uh, other legal entities. <clears throat> so best practices. So from my perspective, it's important we have clearly defined um, workflows. If you're, you're deciding to choose the engineering change management module, um, for me, it's key that we involve cross-functional teams. So uh, when thinking about implementing engineering change management, we've got to think about everybody you know, in that life cycle who's involved in product change. You know, this is not just about designing you know, engineers sitting in their um, research functions and design functions. You know, there's a lot of downstream impact of this. Yes, they may, may own and control the design change, but you know we've got you know we've got production, yeah, you know, manufacturing, warehousing, procurement, of course, sales. You know, there's lots of players in, involved in this, and it's absolutely critical that they're all involved in the conversation. Uh, training and change management is key um, for this module. Uh, it's not something you can just roll out. It's got to be properly communicated. Users have got to be properly uh, trained. Uh, and consider the implications of integrating with other systems, especially if you've done some customizations, um, you know, with the product versioning uh, uh, dimension now, um, and just just think about what the impact might be um, by implementing uh, engineering change management with product versioning, and of course continuous improvement. Keep keep revisiting this and looking at how tweaks can be made to the system and the setup and the parameters um, to ultimately um, finally hone it. Uh, in conclusion, three key takeaways. So engineering change management is crucial for product quality and efficiency. Uh, for me, that's key. 
again, is in, especially in highly regulated uh, businesses, whether you're discrete or process manufacturing. Um, the game is, of course, that is that we ought to get to a position because we've got a much more structured and controlled engineering change process. We should get to a nearer right first time engineering designs. Um, engineering change management offers powerful tools to streamline the process. Uh, we talked about workflows there, um, various templates that we can use, templated uh, processes. Um, and implementation of best practices is, is, is key to success. So everything we've just talked about on, on the previous slide, um, just recognising time. Um, I don't know if we've got any questions prior, but maybe we can field a, a few of them now and I can take the others offline, potentially. Um, there are no questions in the Q&A, but we do have some comments um, from Chris. Thank you so much. I have to drop off for another meeting. Sharon Roberts, fantastic demo. Thanks, Ian. Also has to leave the call. Um, somebody is typing. I'm going to add in the link that we'd like everybody to fill in the form to contact us. OK. I'm going to add that to the chat and to the Q&A. So thank you to all our attendees. Um, you can continue to post your questions if there's anything you have and please, please give us your feedback um, or fill in the contact us form. I've just flashed up some additional resources there, Pra. Um, right. things, are, things I've learnt on my journey. So, awesome. Microsoft Learn is always a good source. Um, we have just take um, tools. Thank you, Ian. We have a question from Ian Weeks. Is it possible to change the ECR flow based on whether a product is in is in proto prototyping or production? Um, so what I'll say is that is that we, when we say the flow, I'm, I'm assuming we, we, we're talking about the the workflow and the approvals process, depending on whether it's prototype or production or, or anything else. Um, now what I what I will say is the workflow capability is is fantastic within engineering change management, and yes, you can you can develop workflows specific to whether it's a prototype. So if product lifecycle state is prototype, then go down this approval route. If it's product lifecycle state of production, it goes through a production route for approvals. Um, I'm assuming that's the nature of the question. Um, fully configurable with workflow approvals process. And if that answers Ian, the question, you can let us know if we've if we've answered your your question. Um, we also have some other feedback or comment. Thanks, Ian. Very informative session. I like the hands-on session from Stephen Nord. Ian Weeks is typing. Yes, you've answered his question. Uh, prototypes need a lighter flow than production as volumes are lower. That's in we yeah, absolutely reply. Uh, Philip North, thanks for the demo. It is very interesting to see it action. Thank you, Philip. Okay. All right. I think if there are no further questions, we can wrap up the session for today. Uh, once again, thank you to all our attendees. We really um, value your attendance and we thank you.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ian. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Well, bye bye.